I will not risk my ships on such a deluded fantasy. So Michael, you have created The Tudors, yes. which is a very, very successful TV show. And now you have a new one, it's called Vikings. Yeah. And we would love to hear something about the plot. Uh, the Vikings um, is about uh, a young Viking. Uh, at the beginning of what was known as the Viking Age, that's when the Vikings first came to the attention of the West, Western world in the 8th century, towards the end of the 8th century, with a, with a very violent attack on the uh, uh, monastery at Lindisfarne Island in Northumbria in England uh, that shocked the Western world because these monasteries had been lived in peace for hundreds of years and suddenly these unknown giants came from uh, Scandinavia. They didn't know where they'd come from and attacked the, the monastery. And thus began the, the, the Viking Age. Uh, Ragnar Lothbrok, my hero, my, the, the principal character, is the first Viking leader who emerges from the, the sort of mists of myth and legend in the sagas that were written down many years later about the Vikings. So um, we know quite a bit about him mm -hmm. from uh, the sagas and from history that he was a very successful Viking leader. He raided. Uh, not only Northumbria, but Paris. He attacked Paris in due course. Um, he, we know that he had two wives. He had a lot of sons who, uh -huh. who became very famous themselves. And he died in a snake pit. That's oh. a spoiler, but there you go. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so it's based on, on this historical mm -hmm. character, Ragnar Lothbrok, and his family. And so, in some ways, it's an adventure story. I've always wanted to tell the story of the Vikings. I've always been excited by the Vikings. But like the Tudors in some ways, I suppose, it's a family saga too. It's a family drama. It's a, you know, it's about Ragnar's relationship with his wife, his children, his brother, his boss. Mm -hmm. um, so it's rooted in human experience. and uh, Which is why people, I think, audiences can connect with it. Um, I, I, I always see history as a continuity, you know, as a continuum. Uh, there's no such thing as, you know, the, 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 the historical past and then the, the present because tomorrow, uh, today will be history. So we live in history and my occupation in the Tudors and just about everything else I write is to connect the past to the present and make the past uh, relevant to the present and resonate with, with people today. Have you always been a history fan? Like in school, was history one of your favorite classes? Well, the truth is that apart from sport, the only two things I could do were history and English. <laughs> so I've cleverly combined them into a career. Yeah. And I'm sure you had to do a lot of research for this movie. How did you start? Where did you start? Well, you can go into a bookshop. There are lots of books about the Vikings. Um, in actual fact, there's not much, well, there's nothing that the Vikings wrote about themselves because they were a non-literate culture. They didn't write anything. Um, and what was written about them was written by hostile witnesses years later, that is, by, um, pure, uh, by uh, um, Catholic monks and Christian monks. And of course, their interest was, <laughs> excuse me, their interest was to destroy all evidences of paganism uh, and the Viking way of life. So there's plenty to read, though, about um, you know uh, about Viking culture, um, which gives you uh, the beginnings of an understanding of of their life. And and then, of course, you could, you should read the sagas, which are the story of their gods, which are just unbelievable. I mean, these stories are, they're weird. The Viking gods are very weird, very strange but brilliant, you know, and, and as a writer I appreciate them so much because they're so rich and imaginative and the Viking gods are really rather human, you know, they're, 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 they're full of foibles and, and they uh, make terrible mistakes and they fight and they, you know, they're just wonderful. Um, so you begin to kind of pick up, paint a picture, find out about them and, and I also have a historical advisor who was with me on 
Elizabeth and the Tudors, and he's an expert on the Dark Ages, if indeed you can be an expert on the Dark Ages, I don't know. <laughs> and uh, so he provides information, and, and so it begins, it's an evolution. It begins in research and thought and all these ideas, images tumbling around in the darkness, and slowly um, storylines start to develop. You get interested in certain characters, and, uh, and, and, it, and, it, and it grows out of that. The series grows out of that, that early research. But I had a, a very academic background, so I love that element of it. I love the research. So when you write a script and you create a new character, mm. do you have this um, picture in your mind which is already finished? Or do you just start and then see what's coming? Yes, it's certainly not finished because you know that when the uh, director turns up, the director's going to have an idea mm. about the character. And of course when the actor turns up, the actor's going to have a very strong idea of, of or you, you talk very seriously to the actor about the character, what your ideas are. But of course, the actor has to inhabit the character. Um, so they're very keen to, to flesh out the character, to know about the backstory, or you know, to, to become that person. You know. So again, that's, that's an evolution. I, I, um, uh, I start with very broad brush strokes. I kind of know, generally speaking, who the characters are. But they do change, grow, and in fact, to me, I know this sounds a little nutty, but they almost become real people. You know, they're, they're, I go into my study in the morning with these people already in there, and I've, I've gone in to find out what they've been doing, you know. So, so do you have a favorite ca character? Um, you know what, that um, you fall in love with a lot of them. Mm -hmm and you love even the bad ones, you know, which is why you can write about them. Which character do you think the audience will love most? Do you think there is a special one? Well, you, I don't know what it's called. There's a list in America that's published, I don't know if it's weekly or daily or mm -hmm. something, about the most popular characters in, in um, either film and TV. And uh, I think Travis, had done a couple of shows or been in a couple of shows in the past. So he was about 479th on the list and uh, uh, Catherine when it was like 370 mm -hmm. or something because she'd been in a couple of things. After halfway through the run, Travis was seventh. That is the seventh most popular actor in Hollywood in either film or TV, and, and Catherine was uh, 14th. Okay? That's pretty cool. So we know who the uh -huh. audience is, uh, is, is going for. I mean, as I think a, lo a lot of the other characters are, are popular, but, but a lot of attention. And, and what I did in a, in a obviously rather naughty way, but, well, no, because it was true, is that everyone thinks that the marriage between uh, Ragnar and Legatha is, is rock solid. We start with their marriage. They obviously love each other. They love their children. It's, it's the foundation of the show, okay? And everything that happens is related back to them and their relationship and things. And she goes with him on, on, uh, to fight on a raid at one stage. But it, due to circumstances really beyond either of their con control, things start to go wrong. And in the last episode of the series, he is away and he meets someone else. Oh. And we know because of all the stuff on, 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 the, um, on Twitter and Facebook that the audience is devastated. The fans are devastated about mm -hmm. this and they really want to know what happens and they really want them to get back together again. So, you know, that we know that they're the most popular uh, characters. Do you think this show has the same potential as Tudors to become that successful? Um, yes, it does. I mean, it, Tudors, um, Tudors has built into one of the great, most successful TV shows. It's still on, it's on, on the BBC now, again, for the first time. It's gone all around the world two or three times. It's, uh, and it, it actually, without being, you know, over, 
immodest. Um, it was the show that started, kicked off all these other shows based on historical material, because before that, the Americans weren't interested. But once we proved that it, that could be popular, uh, there are lots of, of other shows. Lots and lots. Good. Good for them. Good for me. It's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> you know. So, but, but when Tudor's first came out, it was on Showtime, which is a smaller uh, company than the network than uh, history. And I think it got 1.8 million. Now, 1.8 million is perfectly good. You know, that's the network with the cable network were very pleased with that. For example, Game of Thrones only got 1.4 million on its first set. So um, Vikings is playing to 4.65 million, you know. So it's, it's huge, it's, it's absolutely huge. So potentially, I think it could be bigger than Tudor's, partly because, of course, the Vikings are a sort of household name, word around the globe. Mm -hmm. You know, Henry VIII, a lot of people know Henry VIII, but Vikings, everybody knows. Yeah. You know, the show is sold out, as it were. I mean, it's, it's sold to most countries now. And, um, and it is partly because of this recognition factor. Even though, you know, you say the word Vikings to people and, and, and lots of images and, and, and ideas spring to your mind, but most of them are wrong, of mm -hmm. course, you know. But, but nevertheless, it has that Im immediate recognition factor. Well, thank you so much for the interview, and we're excited to see what's going on in the next season. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>